Hello, this is Moses Wen, and welcome to part 4 of my MATLAB tutorials. In this video, I am going to show you how to do some logical tests, if statements, and case switches. So, let's start with some logical tests. So, basically in a logical test, it will test two things and see whether they're true or false. So, this one will analyze whether 1 is less than 5 which is true. When you do a logical test, it will output either a 0 or 1. So 0 being false and 1 being true. So this one is yeah true because 1 is less than 5. You can also do test whether 1 is greater than 5, which is false. Another thing you can do with MATLAB is to see whether it's greater than or equal to, as well as less than or equal to. So let's see if 5 is greater than than or equal to 5. So this we expect will return true. There we go. So it does. And just to show you the other way around. So what if you want to test whether something is equal to something? It is important to put a double equal sign to test whether one thing is equal to something. So this is how you show test whether something is equal to something. If you only put one equal sign, it will try to store one value into another variable. So let's say a equals 5. So that will try to store 5 in variable a. And you don't really want to do that in a logical statement. So let's clear the variables and clear screen. OK, so now I'm going to show you the anti-operator, as I like to call it. So 1 is not equal to 1. So we expect this to be false because 1 does equal 1. So there we go. So this tilde basically means anti whatever is in there. So I'll show you another example. So with this, it's saying that it's not, this condition is false and we want to check if that's true or not. So 1 is definitely less than 5. So this will turn to false because it's saying trying to say that what this is not true but it is true so MATLAB disagrees with this statement okay um when you want to compare two conditions or two tests and you want to see whether one of them is true or both of them are true you can use and as well as or operator and AND operator will return true if, if the two conditions are both true. So there, 1 does equal 1, so that's true. And 2 is greater than 1, so that's true as well, so it will return true. However, if one of them is false, it will return a false, because not both of them are true anymore. So if you only need to have only one of the statements true, you can use the OR statement. So this line represents the OR. So only one of them has to be true in order to output a true. So there we go. So this is true and this is false. So it outputs true. But if both of them are false, it will output a false. Okay. There are other operators like the um, this symbol, which is basically the same as AND, but it only evaluates the first, first, um, what's it called? The first test, see whether it's true. If it's false, it just won't continue and just output false. And same with this operator as well. So basically, if the first one is proven true, it won't continue on to evaluate the other one because it's definitely going to equal true. So there are short circuit operators and they just improve the speed of your program, that's all. So let's start on if cases. If cases is pretty simple to understand. Okay, so what an if statement does is it will check this logical condition. If it's true, it will execute this line in, or, or if else any other condition it will display this line. And so let's try run the program. So a equals 5. So if we'll go is 5 greater than 3 
if it's true, it'll execute this line. If it's false, it'll exec it'll go down here and execute this line. So let's continue. So if this was found true, so it's executing this line. And yeah, so it displays true. So let's let's show you what happens if it's false. So let's run the program once again. So this one is proven false. So we'll step down to the next line, else display false. So it's going to display false. And there we go, it displayed false for us. There's also a else if. So this is an else if statement. So if it'll go through the first if statement, if that is proven false, it will go to the next statement, which is else if. So it's else if this is proven true or false. If it's proven true, execute this. If it's proven false, go to the next condition. So this is else anything else it will display this. So let's see what this one does. So this one's evaluating whether negative 1 is greater than 3 which is false so it goes down to the next one. Else if negative 1 is greater than 0 which is still false so it goes to the next condition. Everything else display this. So it's going to display it and there we go, it displayed it for us. So it's else if is very useful for evaluating conditions. And if you want to execute one like one set of lines with when this test is false and when you want to execute another set of lines when it's true. But there's a sometimes there's a more effective way if you want to just compare like a single variable, right? Or else this. There's a much better way if you want to just see whether this variable meets a certain number. So uh, I'm going to show you how to use K. This is where switch comes in. So let's just take a non leap year example. So first of all, we're going to get the user to input a variable for month. So basically what input does is just prompt the user to put in the input. It'll just print out this text and the user will put in an input and it'll go through the rest of the code. So what switch does is say like evaluate this. Okay, so if month equals one do this, if month equals two do this, if month equals three do this, if month equals four do this. So case switches, if you can imagine if you did it with if, you have a lot of else ifs just going down, like 12 else ifs. So this is a much more efficient way of doing some else if statements. So, but there's some limitations. Like you can't say, oh, if something is greater than this, do this. Else if, if something is in between here and here, do this. So you can't do those type of logical statements when you're doing switch statements. So let's try run this program and see what it does. We'll put a breakpoint there. So input a month. So let's say 5 May. So basically it will go month is 5. So what? Is it in here? Yes it is. So it's display 31. And then, yeah, it just displays 31. So it's gone through this switch, and it's 31. So let's try another one if it equals 2. So, well, month equals 2. So go through these number of cases. It can't find 2 in there, so go to the next case. Can't find 2 in there. And it's finally found 2, so it'll just print out 28. So there we go, it prints out 28 for us. So that's it for today. Um, stay tuned for more MATLAB videos, which will be coming very soon.